Welcome to the Traditional Way Podcast brought to you by the Martial Arts Inner Network. I am your host, Brett Shumway. Please continue to support our network on social media and on our website at www.mainternetwork.com, as well as watch my colleagues' podcasts on their respective platforms as they continue to bring you a plethora of martial arts content. On this episode, I will bring you the results from the Pan American Continental Championships and the Premier League's event. Starting with the PKF Championships that took place in Punta del Este in Uruguay, where 336 entrants from the Western Hemisphere came to compete for the Continental titles for the Pan American Karate Federation. Where the final Premier League event was held in Casablanca, Morocco, where the top competitors from around the world came together to secure the grand winner status for the 2024 season within the Premier League. Let's start breaking down the results. Yamina Lahanza kicks it off in the minus 50 kilogram division, defeating Sofia Balcazar 8 to 4 to secure her second con- consecutive continental title. In the minus 55 kilogram division, Hana Firamoto Deshai defeats Valentina Meneses 4 to 2 to secure her first continental title. Claudia Mar Maestre shocks everyone with her first WKF medal and title, winning the final match of the minus 61 kilogram division by Senshu. The minus 68 kilogram division found Janessa Romero win a close matchup 2 to 1 over Anastasia Velozio to win her first title. And in the over 68 kilogram division, Brenda Pereira wins her second PKF title after defeating Javera Lavin 4 to 1. The men start out with Juan Diaz defeating fellow countryman Juan Ferrero to win the minus 60 kilogram division and take home his first PKF title. Two Brazilians battle it out in the minus 67 kilogram division where Vinicius Figuera wins his third continental title, winning an exciting final matchup 8 to 6. Then minus 75 kilogram division found Thomas Scott win his seventh PKF title, winning the final 8 to 4 over Matias Fuentes. Fabian Huya Comin easily defeats Anderson Solano 9 to 1 to take the minus 84 kilogram division in his first continental title. And in the over 84 kilogram division, Brian Ear wins his third PKF title, walking through Ram Timmermans. 9 to 2. In the Kata divisions, familiar faces once again dominate the PKF championships, as Sakura Kakomai wins her 10th gold medal at the PKFs, winning the final matchup by 1.9 points. In the men, it was once again Ariel Torres and Gakuji Tozaki in the final, where Ariel would win by one point and secure his fifth continental title. In Team Kata, the female teams found Colombia win over Brazil by 1.8 points, and the men were reversed as Brazil beats Colombia in a closer matchup by 0.2 points. Both countries will be represented in each division later in this year for the championships. In the Team Kumite, America secures its representation into the Team World Championships by winning both the male and female divisions. This will be the only two teams USA has in the World Championships at the end of the year. The other teams joining them will be Chile and Brazil, who took home the silvers. Chile in the women's and Brazil in the men's. In the minus 50 uh, kilogram division, the biggest surprise is world number four, Emma Scardelli loses in the first round, being the only real upset early in the rounds. The quarterfinal started off with Modir Zhangarbe defeating Arka Okazaki, 6-4. The second fight saw Natalia Vargova defeating Shama Larani Chandran, 2-1. The next fight, Sarah Susumi beat Yasmin Eljawali, by one point, and then the last fight of the round saw world number one Yergala Salazar easily beating Chloe Bouchard 9 to 1. In the semifinals, both fights were not close as Modir beat Natalia 9 to 1 and Yergalis beat Sara 8 to nothing, setting up a matchup between the world number one and the world number two, where Salazar would achieve the eight point spread and take gold in a 10 to 2 victory. Sara and Ikira bring home the bronze medals. The minus 55 kilogram division, world number seven, Maria Stoli, lost every fight in the elimination round, giving some new faces to be seen in the quarterfinal round. With the first fight, Valentina Manessis easily beats Jennifer Warling, 9-3. World number two, Mia Baich, gets surprised by the number 13th fighter as she loses 4-2 to Viola Lalo. The third fight was a close one with Kuk Istri Sanasterani winning a tied fight by Senshu over Su Ping Q. And in the last fight of the round, Zerma Im defeated Golmira Usavovo by a score of 4-1. to one. In the next round, Valentina de- uh, defeated Viola 7-5, to five, and Cook Eastry defeats Zerma 1-0. to nothing, Where the two in the final would have a good match in which Valentina Manessas would win the gold medal by a score of 6-3. to three. Lalo and Q secure the bronze medals. The world number four, Sahara Shimada, exits early in the minus 61 kilogram division and remains the only surprise in the elimination rounds. 
The first fight of the quarters was won by Mariam Ajarai in a 3-2 victory over Asel Kanai. The next fight found Lee Gong defeat Alexandra Shol Sholakova 2-0. Next, Fatima Shaijai and Carlota Osario fight to a 2-2 tie where Osari uh, wins by Senshu. And in the last fight of the round, world number one Reem Kamis gets upset by number 15 Yuki Kajuro in a 4-1 match. The final four saw Gong defeat Ajarai 3-1 and Kajuro win by Senshu over Osario. In the final matchup, Lee Gong would walk away with a match in an 8-0 final. Reem and Alexandra would both take home the bronze medals. A couple of early exits in the minus 68 kilogram division were world number four Psycho Zafani and world number 10 Sudmir Aksoy would both lose in the first round. Setting up a final eight where Anita Makian would defeat Lynn Snell in the first fight 3-2. Hyder Hendy wins a close fight by Senchu over Talia Sombre. The third fight saw Kiao Kiao Lee fall to Alina Silamanivia 2-0. And the last fight found Elena Corsi defeat Tsubasa Kama 4-1. The semifinal saw Hendy beat Makia 9-1 and Corsi win by decision over Silamanivia. The final match saw Elena Corsi get back to form as she won the gold in a 6-0 routing to top the podium. Elena and Talia secured the bronze medals for the division. The over 68 kilogram division saw the world number one Maria Garcia lose in the elimination round, which set up a quarterfinals where the first fight was Mena Okila defeating Rita Oliveira 4-0. The second fight found Sofia Borotselva defeat Lucia Lesjak 5-4. The third fight saw Meltem Akil defeat Joanna Kinnear 5-0. And the final fight of the round saw Nancy Garcia win by decision over Neve Jr. The final, in the final four, Sofia beat Mena 6-1 and Nancy beat Meltem, setting up a final matchup where Garcia would secure the gold medal beating Sofia 7-3. Les Jack and Akil take home the bronze medals. In the female kata division, there was a couple of top 10 competitors that had earlier than expected exits. Number 9, Teriana D'Onofrio. Number 8, Aya and Nessari. And number 6, Delaria Bozon all lose early in the elimination rounds, setting up a Japanese stack quarterfinal. In the first match, Nakaji Hisami loses to Marissa Uji by a half point. Second matchup found Kiri Mishima beat Sakura Kokomai by 1.9 points. In the third match, Maho Ono defeats Saiko Ozuma by 0.5 points. And in the final match of the quarters, Grace Lau defeats Yi Yin Ting by 1.9 points. In the final four, Marissa beat Kiri by decision and Maho defeats Grace by 0.8, setting up an All Japan final where Maho Ono wins the gold by a full point. Kiri Mishimi and Grace Lau would secure the bronzes for the division. In what is always the most contested division in the Premier League, the minus 60 kilogram division once again had some early exits in the elimination rounds. To include the world number five, Iray Samdan, the number six, Abdallah Hamad, number eight, Merch Halisi, and the number nine fighter, Rayan Mezian, leaving the quarterfinals where we find Kaiser Alpes Bey defeat Anas Abdumaki 4 to 1 in the first fight. The second fight saw Abdullah Shaban walk through Ahmad Hazim 11 to 4. Third fight saw Abdel Jaina fall to Hiromu Hashimoto 3 to 1. In the last match of the final eight, Amir Oberkora defeat Christos Zenos 4-1. The final four saw Shaban defeat, Al uh, defeat Alpes Bay 1-0, and Hashimoto beats uh, Abakora 4-1, setting up a final that saw the first meeting in a final matchup for these two this year, where Hashimoto would secure a 73 victory for his first gold of the season. Alpes B and Jaina would win the bronzes. In the minus 67 kilogram division, world number one Saida Bayo does not make it out of the first round as he falls earlier than anyone expected, which is even more surprising given the fact that he's made a final at every event he has entered this year. The final eight started off with Mohamed Ozdemir defeating Didar Amarali 4-1. The second fight saw Abdel Amasafa beat Anas Alami 10-5. Third fight was Yugo Kasaki defeating Yanis Tas 8-3. And the final fight of the quarter saw Yunus Amar narrowly beat Afif Gaif by Senshu. The semifinals saw Amastafa defeat Ozdemir 7-6 and Kozaki beat Omar 7-0. And in the final matchup was won by Amastafa, who would blank Kozaki 6-0 to, to, to take home the gold medal. Tas and Ozdemir would take home the bronzes for the division. In the first division where there were no upsets in the elimination rounds, the minus 75 kilogram division set up for what should have been a very tough fought quarter finals. 
oddly enough, there wasn't as many close matches as we would have should have expected with the lineup that we had. In the first match, Enzo Berthen defeated uh, Nurkana Ajikanov 7-4. The second match saw Andri Zap uh, sorry, Zap Latini fall to Mohamed Baju 5-2. The third matchup saw Quentin Mahodin easily defeat UC Sakiyama 7-0. And in the final matchup of the round, saw Abdallah Abdelaziz beat Abdallah Abdelawad 3-0. The semi saw Berthen beat Baju 8-5 and Abdelaziz beat Mahadan by Senchu. And in the final match, Abdelaziz would continue his dominance, winning the final by 10 points and securing his 7th gold medal in a row. Aji Kanoff and Mahadan would take home the bronze medals. The minus 84 kilogram division saw world number 4 Valerie Chobatar start the day off with an early exit, as well as world number nine, Mikael Martine, uh, Martina, who would also leave early. The quarter started off with Daniyar Yudashev defeating Konstantinos Masagionis 7-1 in the first match. The second fight saw Muhammad Al-Jafari beating Ivan Kvesic 4-0. The third fight saw Andri Toroshanko beat Junra Ito 1-0. And the last fight of the final eight was a wild fight where Yusef Badawi and Sariti Mehdi would fight to a 9-9 match where Badawi won by Senshu. The final four was a wild one for both the world number one and number two as they would fall to lower ranked fighters, setting up a final matchup between Danny Yar and Andre would their, be their first matchup of the first final matchup of the year. And Andre showed that he belonged there as he would take a 9-1 victory to secure his first Premier League gold medal. Ito and Masadrianos take home the bronze. In the last men's Kumite division, world number six Rob Timmermans exits early in the elimination rounds for the over 84 kilogram division. The quarter saw the highest scoring round uh, of the event. The first match was Mehdi Falali defeating Nikolai Sekat 9 to nothing. The second matchup was a wild one with Risen Talibov winning over Ahmed Almazari 17 to 13. The third fight was won by Amir Zuoi over Fumio. Uh, Yoshimura 10 to 7, and in the final matchup of the round, Taha Muma, uh, Mahmoud defeated Uma Gundog 6 to nothing. The final four saw Risen beat Mehdi and Taha beat Amir, where the final match came down to the world number one and then the world number five, where the world number one would lose another final as Talibov would win the match 5 to nothing. The two Frenchmen would secure the bronze medals. In the male Kata division, Casablanca was not friendly to the top 10 as we saw four of them not make it out of the elimination rounds. Ariel Torres, Ali Sofaglu, Alesso Giannami, and Ayo Funada all had early exits, leaving a heavily favored Japanese final eight. In the first match, Sakichi Abe defeats uh, Ru Ruese Ikita by one and a half points. The second match had Ryuji defeat uh, Iji Otsuki by 2.1 points. Surprisingly, using Jeet, which if anyone has seen my comments on the other ones, has not been the best uh, choice for him, but I'll have to eat my words as he did win. Third match had Kazmoto beating uh, Machida by 0.7, and the fourth match saw Kakuro beat Enes Ozdemir by 1.9 points. The semifinal saw Ryuji beat Sakiche and Kakuro beat Kaz, setting up Ryuji's second attempt to beat the world number one. It would be for nothing but a hope as Kakuro would win his fourth gold of the season by 2.3 points as he's, his dominance in this division is unmatched at this time. Kaz and uh, Sakichi would ensure the All-Japan medal podium. In conclusion, my first takeaway from Casablanca has to be that it wasn't a good event if you were the world number four. For some reason, that was the ranking of most eliminated athletes at the event. Although not all of them got eliminated in the first round, none of them saw a final either, which has was something that you just don't come to see that often, right? When the same ranking loses in each division or gets eliminated early in each division, especially someone ranked that highly. And I would be wrong if I did not take the time to acknowledge the run that Sakura Kokomai has had at the Pan American Continental Championships. 10 golds is a great accomplishment and a statement for her dominance over her career for the region. Regardless of where she goes in the future, her career is the best the American Kata competitor has ever had within the WKF, and it should go with it should not go without notice of how well she has done. Same has to be said for Ariel Torres. Now he doesn't have ten yet, but he's halfway there. And like Sakura, he has reached a level that no other American has ever reached in Kata. He is the current world number two, 
kata competitor and the best male kata competitor in the Western Hemisphere right now. Now look, some people have taken some shots at Ariel online, critiquing his techniques or trying to downplay who Ariel actually is. I get it. It's easy to take a shot at a guy that is doing what no other North American male kata competitor has ever done. I, for one, will not make that statement. Ariel is the best we have from the Western Hemisphere in Japanese Okinawan kata, and that's just how it is, guys. Uh, he has the rankings and the results to prove it. If anyone thinks otherwise, then by all means, go out and beat him. And I may change my mind. But until then, he is it. He is the top guy that North and South America have. And until he proves that he is not that guy, just get behind him and cheer. Don't take shots because he has achieved something that you either can't or will never do. With that, guys, thank you for watching another episode of the Traditional Way Podcast. Continue to support the Martial Arts Internet Network and all our great programming. Join me on the next episode where I will highlight the Premier League Grand Winners and show you how they earned that honor for the 2024 season. Until next time, guys.